Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I'm Dr. Surbhi Agarwal, Fellow in Vitro Retina and Ocular Oncology, and I'm bringing you this month's top five articles. The first article we are focusing on today is on the effect of short-term meditation training in patients suffering from central serous choroidopathy. In this study, patients were divided into two groups. One group received routine care, and the other group received an additional 60 minutes of yoga and meditation every day. At the end of the study period, 60% of patients in the routine care group had failed to resolve, compared to only 8% of patients in the yoga group who had failed to resolve. Additionally, the time to resolution was much faster in the yoga group. And perhaps most interestingly, the choroidal thickness at the end of the study was reduced in patients who were doing 60 minutes of yoga and meditation every day. Our second study this month compares two techniques for the drainage of subretinal fluid after surgery for regmatogenous retinal detachment. The first technique was PFCL-assisted drainage through the peripheral break, and the second technique involved creation of a posterior drainage retinotomy. In the postoperative period, the outcomes were similar for both groups. However, patients who had peripheral drainage using PFCL reported lesser incidence of metamorphopsia. Our third study for this month evaluated the effect of silicon oil on long-term tamponade in eyes with rigmatogenous retinal detachment. After silicon oil removal, they observed that these patients had a reduction in the thickness of the RNFL, the ganglion cell layer, the inner nuclear layer, as well as the inner plexiform layer. And for some of these layers, the thinning was even directly proportional to the loss in visual acuity. So much has changed in the field of vitro-retinal surgery in the past 30 years but perhaps our search for a perfect tamponade agent is still ongoing. Even though the study results showed thinning of the retinal layers after silicon oil removal, we still do not know whether it was because of the effect of the silicon oil per se or because of the complex retinal detachment which required long-term tamponade in the first place. The fourth study under discussion this month is a retrospective review of the genetic analysis data of retinoblastoma patients to determine the effect of paternal age and parental age difference on the risk of heritable retinoblastoma in the offspring. This study actually found that both paternal age and parental age gap greater than 10 years are independent risk factors for the development of heritable retinoblastoma in the offspring. Our last study for this month pertains to one of the most common reasons for referral to a retina clinic, acute PVD. This study found that acute PVD patients who presented with a history of prior cataract or refractive surgery, age less than 60 years, lattice degeneration, vitreous hemorrhage, vitreous floaters, a complaint of blurred vision or visual acuity less than 612 had a manifold increased risk of harboring a retinal tear or a retinal detachment. In the same domain, a study presented recently at the American Academy of Ophthalmology 2021 conference retrospectively reviewed charts of over 4 lakh patients and they found that myopia, lattice degeneration and vitreous hemorrhage were the most common indicators of a patient harboring a retinal tear or a retinal detachment. But most importantly, they stressed on the importance of a late examination at 6 weeks after first presentation to rule out any late detachments or late tears which were likely to develop during this follow-up period. So that's all for this month. See you next month with five more interesting articles. Bye-bye.